Hi guys, um, usually when we want to find a good solution, we have to keep in mind two conflicting objectives that, that we have. On the one hand, we want to be able to get an, a general overview of the search space so we know which areas look more promising, which areas uh, are likely to have very good solutions and which areas um, are likely to be bad so we don't waste our time in, in those areas. This strategy of getting a general overview is usually called um, diversification or exploration. You want to explore as much as possible the search space. And on the other hand, you also want to intensify your search on those areas that look very promising and focus your efforts there and try to find the best uh, possible solution within those areas that, that look promising. And that strategy is called intensification or exploitation. And in any meta heuristic, we have to keep a, a balance between these two strategies. Okay, we have to we would like to quickly identify the most promising areas so we don't waste time in those that do not look good. And then we've once we've got identified those good areas, we want to exploit as much as we can the knowledge we have in, in those local areas. We want to intensify our search in, in the good areas. And basically, as, as Luke says, um, nearly all meta heuristics can be seen as an uh, elaborate combination of these two forces of exploration and exploitation. And we have to, to keep a good balance between these two strategies. When should we use meta heuristics? Well, there are many cases where meta heuristics may be useful. The first thing we have to take into account is the computational complexity of the problem. How how the time we need to solve the problem scales with the size of the problem. For instance, in the traveling salesman problem, uh, we saw that at, at least the, the size of the search space scales um, with the factorial, which is a, a really bad way of scaling, right? And and so, so usually when, when we have a problem that scales very badly, uh, we should start thinking about, about meta heuristics. But also the specific size of the problem we want to solve is relevant because, I mean, even if the problem scales very badly, like the traveling salesman problem, if we're dealing with an instance of the problem that is really small, then probably we can solve it um, exactly and meta heuristics wouldn't be needed. And, and vice versa. Sometimes we, you've got uh, problems that scale very well, maybe polynomially, but the size of the particular problem you want to solve is so big that you really have to use uh, meta heuristics. So, so basically, both the complexity of the problem, how it scales um, with the size of the problem, and the particular size of the problem, of the specific problem we want to solve, play a role in deciding whether we should use meta heuristics or, or not. Another important issue is how much time we've got to solve the problem. If we don't have much time, and, and that is a constraint we, we have in, in, in the real world problem, then we should also think about meta heuristics. There are also other problems that, um, even though maybe they're not combinatorial uh, optimization problems that they, they, they may be continuous uh, functions we want to optimize but um, they may be the landscape may be so rugged like the one we can see here that conventional methods uh, may fail to to find the optimum solution in 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 a reasonable amount of time and for these kind this kind of problems uh, also, meta heuristics may may be may may, may be useful, um, and finally, there are there are some cases in which the function we want to optimize is is a black box, and this means that we don't know anything about the function. We we just know that we can evaluate it. We can we can see how good or bad the solution is. 
uh, but we don't know anything about the structure of the function we want to to optimize and this, this could be because the what we want what we want to optimize is is a complex simulation and we can give it an input and get an output but we don't know much about the structure of of how the simulation works or maybe that the problem is so complex that we we basically do not have any formalization any knowledge of, of the function we want to to optimize so for this kind of scenarios uh, meta heuristics are are often useful and another thing we have to take into account and this is really important is it's what's the objective what, what what's the goal and here th there are two extremes if you like design problems and control problems and and, and planning problems are in, in between but design problems are problems that are going to be solved just once imagine if you want to design a network of telecommunications for a city or, or for a country or you can or you want to design a CPU these are things that you're only going to do once but the implications of this uh, uh, decision of how you solve this problem will have really long-term consequences so for these for this kind of problem where where any imperfection you may have will have severe financial consequences in the future, then the quality of the solution is, is critical. And you may want to spend um, a long time to improve the solution just a tiny bit because that improvement may have a big consequences in the future. And um, so, so, so this will affect how how you parameterize your meta heuristic, or even what kind of meta heuristic you want to use, or even you, maybe you don't want to use meta heuristics in this case because you you really need your final uh, uh, solution to be really good. And on the other hand, at the other ex extreme, we've got control problems. Control problems are those that you have to solve very quickly on an everyday basis. And this could be like how you process your jobs in a workshop uh, at the beginning of, of the day or how you how you route different uh, data packages through a computer network or how you deal with traffic in, in, in a city. So here it's not such a big deal if you don't get the perfect optimal solution. But what is really important is that you give a solution, a, a, a reasonably good solution pretty quickly and for this kind of problems meta heuristics are, are often very useful and then as we said there are other uh, type of problems planning problems that are tactical they're in the medium term and they're in between these two extremes but basically the the summary of this slide is you really have to bear in mind the consequences of of how good or bad your solution will be in order to choose both the method, the approach, and how to parameterize the the algorithms that that you're going to use. Okay, I'll I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye bye.